Today we're going to be taking a look at extended RAD breadcrumb. As a reminder, RAD breadcrumb is part of the Italic RAD controls for Silverlight and RAD controls for WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we're going to have a really quick reminder on how you set up a RAD breadcrumb, and then we'll step into both adding icons and looking into the history system for how we can manipulate that to better suit the needs of your application. I've already gone ahead and created a brand new project in Visual Studio 2010 using the Italic Visual Studio extensions which means I have the correct references, Telerik Windows Controls and Windows Controls Navigation. And I've also gone ahead and added an image directory and added the RAD Breadcrumb Data Class, which we can see here has the ID, header text, as well as list of Breadcrumb Data Class crumbs collection to get all that busy work out of the way. So stepping into our main page, we're gonna go ahead and say Telerik RAD Breadcrumb, give it an X name of RAD Breadcrumb, and we want to do a vertical alignment top just so it displays where we need it to. We can see RAD Breadcrumb instance is populated. So now, of course, we'll need to go ahead and add some data to this. We'll do this really quickly. Hit F7. And we want to step into our loaded event. And here we need to do two things. First up, we want to create our root item. So we'll say Breadcrumb Data Class root equals brand new Breadcrumb Data Class. And on root, we want to go ahead and set the ID equals zero, and the header text is going to be root, something nice and creative. And now with rad breadcrumb, we can go ahead and say x rad breadcrumb dot header equals root, and we can also say rad breadcrumb dot header member path. So what text we're actually displaying is going to be header text. So now everything is technically set up to display our root, but we do want to go one step further and add some data to this root. To do this, we can go ahead and add a little bit of prefab code in for adding 10 sub items and each of them having three grandchild items. So now our root has a nice little hierarchy going on. But this also means we have to add some more properties to our rad breadcrumb instance. So we can say x rad breadcrumb dot hierarchical item source. This is going to be the crumbs collection. And the reason for this is because we're telling it where the item source is coming from from a hierarchical data template. So we don't really have to do an item source situation for this just yet. We're just letting it know where the path is for traversing through that tree. But this also means we have to set our rad breadcrumb to hierarchical member path, which is once again going to be that header text, since we're using the same text for all levels. And of course, what would the sense be of using rad breadcrumb without setting the text mode path to know what property we're going to use for using the text mode of rad breadcrumb? And last but certainly not least, rad breadcrumb item source is going to be root.crumbs, so that sub collection within the data set. Do a quick F5, run this, and when we see it actually in action, we'll be able to see our root item, as well as the ability to go diving down into the children and the grandchildren. So we're definitely getting there, but we want to get one step further now with adding some inspiring icons to these items. So I conveniently already have an images directory. I'll go ahead and drag a few icons over there. We'll use an icon, a regular folder, as well as a junk icon. So you see desktop folder and junk. So we need to set these to our red breadcrumb data class, but first we need to add the property that we need on that class. So over in here, we can say public image source and call this image path. Get and set. So now we have this in our breadcrumb data class. So back in our main page code, we want to go ahead and add one of these, but first up we're going to need an image source converter. This is just going to make it a lot easier to go ahead and convert everything from a pretty quick and easy to type string to an image source. So image source converter, isc equals brand new image source converter. And now we can say root.imagePath is going to be image source isc.convert from string. And we're going to go into our images directory. And we'll say for our root item, we want to use desktop. And it's just that easy to get set up. But now we also need to set up our sub items. So we can make this really quick and easy. Go ahead and copy a little bit of code right here. And for each BCDC, we're going to say that image path is going to be the same code, except not desktop this time. We want to use folder. And last but certainly not least, our grandchildren. Image path is going to be one more time our image source, except this time we're going to use junk. Do a quick save. Now if I go ahead and run this, we've gone ahead and set the path that we need 
on our rad program. But as you can see when everything loads up, we still have our root item, our children items, and our grandchildren items without icons. That's because there's a few more properties we need to set on rad breadcrumb itself to get these all displaying. So back in our code, we're going to scroll down a little bit. And here, where we can set the text mode path and all the hierarchical properties, we're also going to want to set two things. First, xrad breadcrumb dot image path is going to be, as we might expect, image path. And we also want to say xrad breadcrumb dot is icon visible. This is a property you can turn on and off equals true. Another quick save, hit F5 one more time, and now when we load up Internet Explorer, we're going to be able to see our root item as well as sub items, all with our icons displayed. So we can see root has a desktop icon, all our children are folders, and as we go to grandchildren, we see that you know, junk folder. And anything is, the icon for the active item is always going to be displaying at the left, and that's just something that Rad Breadcrumb takes care of for you. But as you've seen, as I'm going through these items, we're also adding to our history collection. So I can go back to root, go and choose other children, other grandchildren there, skip through a few, back to root, this time child 1, grandchild 1, or we can go to grandchild 2, and we can see the history collection is holding all of these. But sometimes you may not want to give your users that many options for history, so you know, kind of limit the amount of times that they can go back or access things quickly. But for that we have one more really easy to use property, so we say x red breadcrumb, and we can set the history size. In this case, we'll say it's four. So quick save. We run the application. Wait for Internet Explorer one last time. And now everything's loaded up. We can see we have our root item. We're gonna go to child two. From there to grandchild two. Skip a little back. Root child four. Look, and we can see we're on child four. We've had those few others. So we'll go ahead, go to something in our history. Switch one more time. This time go to seven. This time to eight to a grandkid, back to root, and we click here and we see there's only so many items available in our history. So we have the ability to set the history size and kind of limit how many times you can step back. We can also go one step further and say rad red from is history enabled. Say false there, and that means when we go back in, we can go ahead, we can select our root. As we go, we have child three, grandchild two. As we click here, there is no history displaying. So we've seen how easy it is to extend Red Red Chrome with some of the additional functionality that we have available, such as icons and the history selection. Stay tuned for the last video in this series where we see how quickly and easily you can integrate Red Red Chrome with Red Tree View to really recreate that Windows Explorer type experience.